Okay, this sermon is entitled, Why Some People Understand Salvation and Others Don't. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 110 reads, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. Now turn over to John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, it talks about the Holy Spirit. And the main reason why people don't understand salvation is because they're not saved. They have never been born again, and they don't have the Holy Spirit indwelling them. And therefore, they get misguided, and they do not receive the truth. In John 14, it reads in verse 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, the first thing the Holy Spirit teaches a person is the way of salvation, by grace through faith, and the eternal security of the believer. Now, these unsaved devils out there, these false prophets, they have no clue about salvation, and that's why they fall for all this garbage, this repent of your sins stupidity, and this, you know, changed life foolishness, and they fail to understand that salvation is an act of God, and the rebirth is spiritual, not physical. So the first reason why people don't understand salvation is, is very simple. It's because they're not born again. The second reason is because they do not study the subject of salvation or soteriology. Turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. It reads in verse 15, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So in order to understand salvation better, in order to just have a, a mature grasp on this, you have to study the scriptures, and then you can become wise unto salvation. And this is even talking about, you know, children. Okay, a lot of these unsaved, you know, devils out there, they think that children can't be saved when that's about as stupid as it gets because the Bible says to come like a little child, and if you don't, you will in no wise enter therein. So obviously a child can be reared up in the Word of God and can, and can learn and augment their skill set when it comes to the subject of salvation. Okay, the third reason is because people don't read the Bible for themselves. Now, a lot of people will, will read the Bible in church and they'll follow their you know, tradition and they'll just basically believe anything their pastor you know, spits out, but that's not reading the Bible you know, for themselves. Turn over to Acts chapter 17. The reason why it's so important or the reason why it behooves us to read the Bible for ourselves is because tradition leads us into mendacities and lies. Tradition does not line up with what the scripture says at all. And it reads in verse 10 of chapter 17, it says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So what this tells us is that we need to have a readiness of mind. We need to make our minds into a, a blank slate with no preconceived ideas or preconceived suppositions. And we just need to accept and receive you know, what the Bible says without controversy, without questioning, and without disagreement. Okay. Now let's turn over to, or turn back to rather, Psalm 119. We see an example of this with King David. It reads in verse... 99 it says i have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation i understand more than the ancients because i keep thy precepts so what he's saying here is that you can surpass in knowledge your own biblical teachers if you just meditate upon the word you know day in and day out the next reason why people do not understand salvation is because they follow a false prophet some unsaved stupid devil like James White or John MacArthur or Paul Washer or Tim Conway or Francis Chan or anybody that's just believing in a works-based salvation and pushing it adamantly okay if you follow these stupid unsaved devils you will end up believing and parroting what they teach and that's inevitable so 
it's very important that we just you know reject these false prophets and mark and avoid them like the Bible says. The next reason why people don't understand salvation is just pure apathy, indifference. They just don't care. Okay, number six, okay, people have no interest in being an apologetic evangelist. Now, an apologetic evangelist is somebody who's litigious or polemical, and they defend the Christian faith, you know, with philosophical reasoning or whatnot. And there's nothing wrong with this, because we need to become apologetic. We need to defend the faith. Turn over to 1 Peter chapter 3. Now, when I talk about apologetics, I'm not talking about defending the Christian faith. Somebody like... Frank Turek or Norman Geisler or Peter Kraft or even like William Lane Craig or whatever. I'm talking about just being able to, to defend the subject of salvation. Like whenever you're evangelizing you know, somebody, you can explain eternal security or explain that there's nothing we can do that can mess up our salvation and that it's all by grace. That's what I mean by apologetics. 1 Peter chapter 3 reads in verse 15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So we should be able to back up our faith and corroborate it with you know, scriptural pragmatism, but a lot of people don't want to do this, and that's why they don't really care about you know, evangelizing, or they don't really even care about salvation too much, understanding it better. It's sad and tragic. The final reason on my list is because they're just babes in Christ. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And it reads in verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ, I have fed you with milk, and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet are ye now able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife, divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? What Paul is saying here is that he's you know, trying to get these people to grow, to achieve some level of spiritual maturation, and yet they would rather just stagnate in babedom or become a babe in Christ, never growing, never maturing, and, and just remaining in that incipient state. Such people can't really understand the scripture very well because you have to mature, you have to you know, get into the meat. And these people are stuck on the milk. So that could be another reason why people don't understand salvation very well. It's because they're just babes in Christ. So let me go back down my list and recapitulate. The number one reason why people do understand salvation is because they're saved. The Holy Spirit is leading them and guiding them into all truth. They do study the Bible on their own and they study salvation. They read the Bible for themselves, disregarding what some false prophet who's preaching you know, tradition teaches. They do care you know, about this subject. They have an interest in being an apologetic evangelist. And they're mature in the faith. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.